When a negative charge is placed near a positive charge and released it will be accelerated towards the positive charge. As it accelerates, its kinetic energy increases as it moves faster and faster. Where does this energy come from? We know from conservation of energy that when an object gains kinetic energy, it must lose some other sort of energy. In this case, the charge has electric potential energy which is converted to kinetic energy. In the same way, a ball held above the ground and released accelerates towards the ground as its gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. In the case of gravitational potential energy, we define the zero of gravitational energy to be when an object is on the ground. This is an arbitrary but convenient convention. For charges, we usually define the zero of electric potential energy to be when the charges are infinitely far apart. As with gravitational potential, it is really only the changes in potential energy that are important. Hence, we usually talk about potential energy difference. The change in potential energy per unit charge is called the potential difference. The unit for energy is the joule, J. Unit for potential difference is the joule divided by the coulomb, J by C, which is also called the volt, V, in honor of Alessandro Volta, who constructed the first battery in 1800. Potential differences are often referred to as voltages. Let's build a simple battery similar to what Volta built in 1800. Galvanized washers and bare copper wire of 25 gauze is taken. Circles are cut from card sheet paper to match the size of the washers. These circles are soaked in saturated salt solution which acts as an electrolyte. Galvanized washer, soaked circle and curled copper wire forms a basic cell which delivers potential difference of 0.6 volt. Connecting more such cells in series will give enough voltage to power an LED. It is often presented that electrons carry the energy in the circuit. Electrons are just too slow to carry energy fast enough. They travel at a relatively slow rate between two terminals. Energy transfer due to potential difference between two points does occur due to electromagnetic field produced in the circuit. This is a topic for higher standards and for now we will use water analogy to understand voltage, current and resistance. Taps are always placed at the bottom of water tanks rather than the top or halfway down. This is so that when the tap is turned on water will flow out unless some other force is provided like pressure from a pump water will always flow downwards from a region of higher gravitational potential to one of lower gravitational potential. This is why water tanks are often placed up on the stands or towers so the water can run down to the houses. The difference in gravitational potential is what makes the water flow and gives you a current. In a similar way, a battery provides an electrical potential difference to produce a current in a circuit. In a plumbing system there is a current of water, in a circuit it is a current of charge, electrons, which flows through the circuit. The current I at some place in a circuit is equal to the rate at which charge flows past that place. If the flow is steady then I equals to Q by T. The SI unit of current is the ampere A, often called the amp. When you open a tap so the water can flow out, you are decreasing the resistance to flow. The more you open the tap, the less the resistance and the greater the current of water. For an electrical current flow, the greater the resistance, the smaller the current. Almost any path for either water or charge will have some resistance which will depend on the width of the channel, its length and the nature of any stuff inside which may impede the flow. For example, narrow pipes have greater resistance than wide pipes and allow less water to flow. 
less conductive materials which have greater resistance allow less charge to flow. In electric circuits, the current I through a component depends on its resistance defined as R equals to V by I where V is the potential difference between the ends of the component. Any device whose resistance stays the same when the potential difference across it is changed is said to obey Ohm's law which says V equals IR. If you have only a single path then the more resistance you put in the greater the total resistance and the less current will flow for a given potential difference. If you want to get a lot of water quickly from a container you provide more than one opening so that there are multiple paths for the current to flow along. Similarly when you connect resistors in parallel in a circuit the current is larger than if you use only one resistor because just as with plumbing there are many paths for the current to take. Voltage is like gravitational potential difference or a difference in height. If you have two containers linked by a pipe water will flow until the water is at the same height in both containers. If it is already at the same height there will be no flow. A voltage is a difference in electrical potential. A voltage or electrical potential difference is necessary to make an electric current flow. You can have a voltage without a current. Any time that charges are separated there is a voltage. For example in a battery or across a cell membrane. Current only flows if there is a path for it to flow along. Whenever there is a voltage across a conductor there is an electric field inside the conductor and that field pushes the charges example electrons and makes them flow which is a current in normal materials. There is resistance so a voltage needs to be applied continuously to maintain the current.